Oh, awesome. Okay, Mark is right. Had a little message come up as I'm about to uh, start recording. Hey, welcome. So today we are going to make and install sound panels for our new studio. So let's do it. So if you'll remember, we finished our studio. The walls look great. The faux brick looks fantastic. I love it. Problem is, the echo is extraordinary, which means we need to install some sort of sound treatments. Now, of course, I can buy something if I were made of money, which I'm not. So the better route is to make my own. So that's what we're going to do today. So for this project, I'm using Rockwool Safe and Sound Fire and Soundproofing Insulation. Yeah, it's actually 15 and a quarter and 47. Who'd have thunk it? So I've got all my gear together, as well as my little helpers who are gonna ingest any sawdust and shavings that I create. We're getting the carpet replaced in this room, so I'm not too worried about making a mess. I'll uh, give you kind of an inventory of everything I use here in a moment, but right now we're just getting this all set. Then, of course, we cut all these things, which absolutely terrifies me. Power tools scare the bejesus out of me. Okay, so here is our inventory of pieces. The wood is, of course, one by fours. One by four, of course, being the size it was when it was wet. So now that it's dried, they're three and a half by one inch. Is it? No. Three and a half by half an inch. Something like that. Holy smoke. Okay, so then I cut them out at uh, two pieces, 48 inches, three pieces at three and a quarter, and then those corner pieces there, I measured them to eight and a half inches and then cut them at 45 degrees on each side so I can use them to stabilize the corners. So then we go ahead and assemble the box itself, which done on carpet is a real adventure. And if you know what you're doing, you have a workbench for this nonsense. I'm drilling some pilot holes so that I can keep it from splitting when I drill in the screws, which didn't work because some of the wood split anyway. Pilot hole probably wasn't large enough. The screws I'm using are just good old fashioned drywall screws. I probably should have used something else, but I have a bazillion of those, so I use them. Then we go ahead and put in the corner piece. This is for stability. Now, as I mentioned, the wood is three and a half inches wide there. However, the insulation panel that we're going to put in, it's three inches wide. So it should sit pretty nicely there on the corner and then a center piece that we'll put in here in a moment. So here's that centerpiece I was telling you about. Of course, it's going to give us a little bit more stability, uh, but most importantly, it's gonna keep the panel, that insulation panel in place. 
it will sit nicely on top of that and uh, tuck in well. You notice a couple of uh, pencil marks there. I just want to make sure that it's set in the middle just because I'm anal that way. You wouldn't know it by the quality of the build with this thing, but I manage all right. So now we get to see how well this thing fits in here. I don't want to have to cut any of that insulation. As my wife says, any day I don't have to touch insulation is a good day. So uh, we're building the frames to fit. Oh yeah! And then of course you need a puppy break. Okay, where's my camera? It's right there, all right. Okay, so here's what we have now. I have six, I've made six of these frames, right? Looks like putting my head through a guillotine. Um, I've got six of these frames all set for six sound panels. Now, one thing I did do off camera, if you will, is I sanded the corners. I sanded the corners and the edges and so forth. My thought is I'm about to wrap these things in, um, oh, and here's one that I missed. Okay, well, I'll go off and do that one. So I'm going to wrap these things in fabric and I don't want that fabric to rip or tear or anything like that get worn on the corners. So I just sanded them a little bit. Uh, on the topic of fabric, I got this really nice acoustic fabric out of a few yards of this stuff. Um, breathable, supposed to be acoustically invisible, yada yada, whatever the actual technical terms are, I don't know. And, uh, and the color is right for my studio, so I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to uh, staple this down. And then what I'm going to do, and then what I'm going to do is uh, put this backing material uh, on the back. It's the same sort of stuff that goes on the bottom of furniture and so forth to uh, kind of clean it up, keep the, the uh, uh, what is it, this um, fiberglass insulation in place, keep it from getting, you know, from going every which way and so forth. It just makes it nice. I'm finishing it, all right? So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna speed this up just because it takes me forever. I tuck in the insulation there, fits in nicely. And then I wanna make sure that I cut the fabric such that there's plenty of fabric to wrap around because the idea is I'm going to um, pull it taut and staple it in place. I kind of fixate over all of this stuff. I'm not used to carpentry. I have no carpentry skills, so I spend a lot of time kind of fussing with everything, as you can see. Now the idea here is you go ahead and uh, staple on one side and then pull it taut and staple the other side just kind of to get it started. And then you're going to do the same from the ends. Now the staple gun worked fantastic, but uh, the staples were sticking out just a smidge, so I went ahead and took the hammer to kind of uh, set them in. Okay, I like, you're over there. Okay, I like what I've done here. It's uh, nice and smooth, that's what I want. Now what I need to do is these uh, corner pieces. What I'm going to do is fold this over and staple it just like that 
That way it'll give me a nice kind of clean look. I guess actually I'm going to do it on top. I'm going to do it on top so the sides are smooth. And uh, then I'll cut off the excess back here. I don't know. I don't think I need to cut off the excess. Never mind. Um, then I'm going to put on the backing. So let's give that a whirl. Now folding this over the top is nothing terribly complicated, but like anything else that I'm not used to, I sort of overthink it. But in the end, it works out just fine. Now, if my wife were here, she would tell me to fold the edges here. Yeah, I think I'll give it a whirl. As it turns out, it's really not all that difficult to just fold over the side there and, and staple that in place. So, so yeah, I'm glad I followed my wife's advice that suddenly appeared in my head. You know what professionals do? They measure and cut first and then install. Whatever. The funny thing is, as it turns out, this was my most successful backing installation. Um, all the others I kind of muffed up quite a bit. So uh, this one looks nice and clean and, and works out pretty well. And there we go, backing all set. So there we have it, one completed sound panel. Ooh, even if I move it back and forth, I can hear a difference in the sound, which is good, but now we gotta do it five more times. Okay, so last step, we're gonna install these things. Now, to do that, I got these, uh, well, picture hanging system, whatever, right? Uh, the idea is you put one on the wall and then one on the picture. Here we go. And it clips in like that. Okay, pretty slick and hopefully it doesn't do that. Um, supposedly these things hold uh, 75 pounds. These things are only like 15 pounds, so that should work just fine. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So the directions say that in order for this to work properly, you have to use all the screws. Okay. Four holes, no, five holes, four screws. Go figure.
Now in theory, the screws that are provided will hang in drywall just fine, but I wanted to make sure at least one of them is in a stud. So uh, I'm going to off-center this a little bit, but it should be able to hang just fine if it's slightly askew when I hang it. So we'll see how that goes. Now, as it turns out, I don't think I needed to put a screw in the stud there. Those, those screws that come with those brackets, they're, they're pretty heavy duty. I think they would have held up the, the uh, what is this thing I'm making? The sound panel. It, they would have held up the sound panel regardless. And in some cases, I couldn't find a stud uh, to use. So don't worry about that. Moment of truth, is that the phrase? So here's the deal, it's not perfectly square, and that's gonna drive me nuts. So I'm going to leave what's on in the wall on the wall, and I'm gonna slightly adjust the uh, bracket, whatever you wanna call it, on the sound pan. That did the trick. So now it's up, check this out. Now, I know that because of the perspective of the camera and everything, it looks a lot closer to the wall than it does to the window, but trust me, it's perfect. It's exactly where I want it. So, and yes, the height is where I want it, so this is great. Now I just need to do, what, the five more, right? That's the routine. All right, all done. Now time for the reveal. Not bad, right? Okay, so those of you listening at home are saying, well, hold on, I still hear an echo. Did it really make any difference? Yes, you are hearing an echo, but yes, it did make a difference. Granted, there's still more work to be done. I'm going to put up a, a sound blanket over by where the, um, what is that thing called, a closet? I'm gonna put a sound blanket over by the closet. I'm gonna put in some, some furniture and so forth, and so that'll help. So yeah, granted, I sort of wish it had done more as well, but it's a lot better than it was. So more work to be done, but I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, if this video has really demonstrated anything at all. I'm no handyman, and yet I could not be more pleased with how these turned out. So as the adage goes, if I can do it, you can do it.